Welcome to The Takeaway. This is Nobu Hada, Director of Member Engagement for the National Association of Realtors. And I'm super, super stoked to be bringing you a really good friend of mine and fellow uh, real estate nerd and thought leader, uh, Matthew Shadbolt, New York Times. Matthew, say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Your history in real estate goes beyond uh, the New York Times real estate stuff, doesn't it? Yep. Uh, it goes all the way back to 2006 when I joined uh, the Corcoran Group here in New York City as their um, head of digital. They were looking for a digital guy to come in and run, basically run the website. It's pretty amazing. We've been going. We've been talking a lot uh, over, uh, over the last couple of years since you've been on the New York Times. The amazing amount of consumer data that you guys are, are starting to glean, and that's some of the some of the things that I really kind of want to talk about with your chat today. Um, I really kind of want to uh, hit on very first off this this idea about content and being useful. Every second, eight thousand tweets go live. Fifteen hundred Instagrammers post images. Fifty four thousand people press like on Facebook. Ninety two thousand YouTube videos play. Forty six thousand seven hundred people. Uh, conduct a Google search. And shockingly, 2,300,000 emails go out every single second. And when it comes to real estate, how, how can we stand out? Yeah, it's, um, you know, unfortunately, I think this is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of content production. But one of the interesting things around this, I think, is that I think a lot of folks are starting to realize that the cost of producing these things is not necessarily correlating to the return that they get. Um, it's something that they call um, peak content. That's sort of a marketing term that's used in, in reference to this, where essentially the, the investment necessary to keep attention is going to be higher than the impact on revenue. It's going to cost you more to get those eyeballs and especially to keep those eyeballs. Anybody that's trying to have a serious play in Facebook, for example, will know this. There's a tremendous amount of noise and it's it's incredibly unforgiving when it comes to something like the news feed. I think, you know, remaining visible in the news feed, you've really got to have a lot of momentum um, behind sort of consistently being interesting and valuable and sort of earning that equity within the newsfeed in order for it to sort of pay returns for you. You know, one of the things that we hear a lot of from our users is that they can get listings anywhere. Like the, the finding the listings, especially online, isn't really a problem our users have. They can get them anywhere. They can get them from brokerage sites, they can get them from portals, right. you know, they can get them via email from an agent. Getting listings isn't really the problem, but, but understanding where to look like which neighborhood, which town, which city, things like that. Like that's still sort of unsolved when it comes to the online experience of looking for real estate. And a good example of this is the differentiation between a city-centric search and a, and a suburban search, for example. So for us in New York, you know, there's a very big difference between an Upper East Side search and an Upper West Side search in terms of what you would be looking for and the kind of results that you would get. And there's very sort of hard delineation between neighborhood boundaries in the city. Like there's, there's, it's at the sort of street level between Midtown and the Upper West Side. But for, for suburban searches, it's a lot fuzzier. And when people say, I'm looking, I'm looking for a place in Morristown, New Jersey, what they actually mean is the Morristown, New Jersey area. And a lot of online portals don't tend to surface the things that are nearby, for example. But So if the user doesn't know the name of the town that's immediately one over or two over from Morristown, New Jersey, it actually doesn't surface as a result because the user hasn't searched for it. But what they mean is like, I'm interested in sort of this kind of area, but because we sort of apply this sort of quite algorithmic neighborhood centric delineated boundary around a search online users actually miss a ton of stuff and that's actually what i see over and over again offline the agent will work with somebody that's looking in the morristown area but they'll they'll be very keen to show them things that are one or two towns over that that the user may not even know about and it it feels like a great sort of opportunity to sort of connect the dots there absolutely and and i think it's 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 Merging this online versus off offline experience, making it stream uh, streamlined and and just directly uh, back and forth with each other, I think is going to be key. Because you're exactly yeah. right. I mean, I agents at the end of the day, they're experts in their community, regardless of where that home happens to be. And I think we're just kind of hamstrung right now with the way things are kind of portrayed online. Just we, the consumers think this is all they've got. The they, consumers really don't know what they don't know at this point, right? Unless yeah, that's, that's that very true. Connected. 
So um, it's a really interesting sort of technical problem in terms of how you surface things that would be most helpful that the user hasn't actually searched for. Yeah, one of the ways that I would um, I would always write about content-wise the overflow neighborhoods where once you're priced out of the prime neighborhoods that everyone is looking for, here are your alternatives for housing that is just nearby that, that you may not have thought about. And giving people something to think about nowadays beyond yeah. Google is, 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 I think, is key to a lot of people's marketing. I, I agree. Um, I mean, one of the things that we... We talk a lot about in my group here at the Times is is just prolonging that sense of enjoyment in the yeah. process as long as possible. Because when you first start to look for a house, it's very exciting, especially if you're a first time buyer. This is the year I'm going to buy my own house. I'm going to stop renting, and there's this sort of excitement and sort of thrill, and and there's a lot of recreational searching, that, that, especially online, that goes on with that. And then as you start to get more serious, you start to get closer and closer to this this sort of cliff's edge kind of moment where it's like, oh, like the reality of the situation actually starts to starts to bite. And you find that like what you're what you're trying to correlate to your dream of what you're what you actually think you're gonna buy is not necessarily the reality. And that's that can be quite disheartening for people, I think. So this idea of sort of prolonging that period of enjoyment and actually getting users to feel smarter and more confident about the choices they're making so that there's less of a cliff's edge moment um, in terms of the, the, the harsh reality of the the zeros and ones of, of the transaction sort of kicking in. Um, that's, I think, where as a service to the customers directly in person um, can be really, really valuable. It's prepping people better than a Google search can. Is, 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 is VR kind of the next step of that virtual reality? Is it being able to, in real time, helping people walk through these neighborhoods, uh, helping people explore on their own, discovering on their own? Is that the next step in marketing now for, I think, for, for real estate? I, I, think, I think it certainly can help. I mean, when you think of real estate and VR, there's some, some obvious places that you go uh, when you think of those two things and what they might be together. But I think, you know, one of the things I would I would caveat that with is we have a fairly fairly long way to go just with photographs, I think, um, in terms of the quality of photographs at scale. There are some people that do some amazing things and there are people that still sort of struggle with that as something that they use in their marketing, especially their online marketing. And I think VR is, is you know, many steps after photographs. Like if you can nail photographs, if you can nail like getting videos right, then, then you know, maybe you can sort of graduate to VR, I think. But I think, you know, one of, the, one of the interesting things around VR is the kind of sort of people problems that it starts to address around real estate. You know, this idea of, of really getting an immersive sense of the vibe of a neighborhood I think VR is really good at stuff like that, that photographs or, or even video like can't really get at. Like VR can can help you sort of understand what it's like to walk your dog in the park on a Sunday morning or what it's like to sit at the bar on a Saturday night or, or eat at that particularly sort of great restaurant that's just around the corner from where you're thinking about living. VR is really good at that kind of stuff. And it's sort of... A great at answering the question about what's beyond the four walls of the apartment. I, I think um, that's sort of what excites me about VR. Yeah, absolutely. I'm already hearing um, uh, agents using. Well, Matterport is already kind of uh, uh, kind of within many uh, agents' marketing uh, uh, repertoire now. But being able to send a, a Samsung Galaxy uh, headset and phone to a foreign buyer who wants to walk through the home from his home, wherever he is on the other side of the planet. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. hearing more and more about agents being able to do that. Is this, is this a new normal for, for, for folks? I mean, should, uh, going beyond listings, right? Uh, should, should we be preparing for your kids who will be buying homes in, within the next 20 years? Should we be prepared for their new normal when it comes to, when it comes to realtors and brokers around the country? I think I think it's early days at the moment. I mean, you know, if you look at how many VR tours have been produced versus the amount of listings and photographs there are, like it's a very tiny amount at the moment. But it's it's incredibly effective at getting people to understand what the the nature of that space is. You know, for me for me the interesting thing isn't necessarily touring the apartment. The the interesting thing for me is being able to go outside. You know, because I think I can. 
you know, f- photographs are very, very effective uh, and have been for a long time at getting people to understand what the nature of a space is. And at, at some point, especially if you have enough great photos associated with a listing, you actually it actually sort of makes the VR tour redundant. But being able to go outside, especially especially in a city, what does it feel like to walk to the subway? What's what's my walk to the grocery store going to feel like? Like that's really tough to do with photos, but solved for, you know, beautifully by by VR. So I think, you know, when I say like real estate and VR, there's some very obvious places to go with this. I think this idea of sort of being able to give like sort of remote home tours, that's that feels good with a lot of overseas buyers. Um, I think even Google Hangouts has, has been really great for this, where the, the agent sort of gives the tour in person, but just sort of through through the device to the to the virtual client. And the client is able to actually sort of point out things and ask questions in real time. I think that's that's great. I've seen even things like Facebook Live, you know, virtual tours through Facebook Live where people are asking questions. I think that's really helpful. It's It's sort of you know, that level of interactivity is really important. So the more you can get the the direct interaction with the one-on-one user and have them ask questions or point out things or get you to show them things again or, you know, open doors, you know, look underneath things, things you would do on like a real showing. I think that is where this stuff can be really powerful and it isn't necessarily solved by photographs and it isn't necessarily solved by like just a pure sort of VR tour. It needs to, be, it needs to have that sort of layer of, of, um, of interaction on it as well. Interaction, usefulness, helpfulness, and actionability when it comes to whatever it is these people are experiencing. Yeah, it's it's like, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, what is the people problem here? The people problem here is, is help me understand what it feels like to live here. Is this right for me? Will it be right for my for my family? Is it right for my lifestyle? Is it like, how does this fit in with how I see myself as a, you know, as, as an individual? It's those kind of things. You know, this, this is a very large financial decision. And um, the more you can kind of bring that, bring the answers to those things to life, the, the more value you have within the transaction, I think. Yeah. And these new normals are, I think, are to do, be, be making, helping people make these decisions. You know, Uber has changed the way people think about owning cars or the fact that, you know, possibly, and I've seen it already in New York and, and, and here in Chicago, uh, people getting rid of parking lots for uh, their developments and instead uh, going uh, all out on things like amenities. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, the one of the interesting things about Uber is, you know, they view themselves as a, as a technology company. And even though sort of people in their in their heads, they think of them as, as sort of a transportation service. Yeah. What they're really interested in doing is is actually getting you to what you want to do faster. So they're, they're just sort of a way to shrink time between things. What they actually facilitate is, you know, you being at the bar earlier to hang out with your friends. That's what's valuable about them. Or you getting home earlier to spend more time with your family. Like that's actually where Uber becomes incredibly valuable is they are the sort of the means of you actually getting what you want in a, in a convenient sort of faster way the agents sort of are really facilitating you know incredible experiences in people's lives yeah reducing friction saving people time uh, and if you ask any realtor i think they dig down deep they know that they do this for everybody they just most consumers just don't know about it yet which is again yeah. kind of ties back in what we've been talking about from the beginning of this hey matthew how can how can people can, is twitter the best way for folks to have uh, cool conversations with you Yeah, absolutely. I'm at Matthew Sheppel on Twitter. Awesome. Thanks, Matthew.